Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today, I thought it was about time to film a list of fragrances that work year round. I've done this video before, so if you want more recommendations, you can check that out. But I think these kind of fragrances are, you know, particularly helpful when you're not trying to have like such an extensive fragrance collection. You want scents that you can depend on. So the first one I wanted to recommend is House of Siage Whispers of Truth. This is a beautiful, sweet, citrusy, floral fragrance, but it smells grown. This has such an uplifting, happy tone to it. Grapefruit, bergamot, orange. It has that smell of opening up a fresh citrus fruit where that scent just bursts and fills the room. And this has a very airy sweetness to it. It's not overly sweet. To me, it smells like there would be a saffron note in here. There's not. It's a caramel. So it's a thinned out airy caramel. It's nothing too like goopy, dense, or heavy. And then we have a beautiful like earthy but clean smelling oak moss. And by the way, for any of you who are newer to the fragrance world and you're seeing like an oak moss note and you're you're thinking to yourself, girl, I don't, I don't want to smell like moss get a sample and give it a try because honestly like oak moss comes across as such a polished chic note it gives a fragrance like a sophisticated clean earthy feel like it really grounds a scent has some woody facets and then i also pick up on a beautiful rose note that also helps to ground this. So overall, this fragrance just feels classy, fun, and just very likable. It's quite a compliment getter as well. So the citrus makes it work for the warmer months, but then the rose, the caramel, and the oak moss give it strength and depth for the cooler seasons. And I get about eight hours with moderate projection. Next fragrance is Parlemois de Parfum Milky Musk 39. Beautiful, your skin but better, woody, musky, unisex fragrance. If you're someone who doesn't want to be doing like the most with your scent, but you want to smell undeniably good, you smell clean, fresh, like has a very natural tone to it, but then it's also low key sexy. Like you need to try this. It has that cozy, warm, inviting, your skin but better type of musk, but then also a nice natural sandalwood chips kind of scent. It's creamy and comforting, but also has like a bit of a dry quality to it. And although there are only the two notes listed, like this is not boring, not at all. And like, it pulls the compliments. Super likable, crowd-pleasing scent. I get about six hours with moderate projection, and you could also use this as a layering base if you wanted under other fragrances. Simpler composition, but it's addicting. Like, it just smells chic, elevated. This could be the smell of, like, expensive hotel products as well. This, out of the shower, for the gym, for work, day-to-day -day signature scent, Check, check, check. Next scent is a new one to my collection. This is Tamin's Blue Heart. You guys, this is a very unique fragrance. I got a sample of this as soon as I could get my hands on it when this first launched because the list of notes, like I love everything, love everything. When I got my sample of Blue Heart, I found it a bit strange. I'd never smelled anything like this before. Um, and it was also like completely unexpected to what I was picturing. So I continued to revisit my sample for over a year. And it wasn't until recently that I revisited my sample and I'm like, okay. Okay, I really like this now. And I then requested it from Twisted Lily. They were very kind to send this over. So if you're interested in this one, just, just get a sample. It's not blind by safe. The saffron in here is doing the absolute most. Like, this is a very strong saffron musky scent. I don't know if this is going to make sense, but to me, this has like a very fuzzy kind of character to it. It also has this like powdery creamy texture, powdery orris with a meaty coconut. There's definitely a warmth from the amber. It isn't like a heavy dark amber, but it does bring in this resinous, almost white amber quality. And then there's also a woody base from the Cipriol and a light bit of sweetness from Tonka and vanilla. 
I feel like my description is not making any sense. I'm trying. This is hard to describe because like this scent does not pair up or like equal to something that I've smelled before where I can give you like a comparison. It smells very mysterious, exotic and sexy. Like I picture an insanely beautiful woman, like most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And she knows she is. Like she is smooth, stealthy, very smart, quick on her feet. And she is using her skills and assets to go steal the largest sapphire on earth. Like it's this whole like Ocean's 8 kind of situation. She's trouble, she's sexy, she's dangerous. So because of this powdery, creamy coconut, it works in warmer seasons. But by the way, this does not smell like any coconut fragrance you've smelled before. Like this is not serving coconut in the usual manner that you will pick up. Doesn't smell gourmand, doesn't smell like a sun product, doesn't smell like a tropical floral coconut combo. Um, or, you know, a typical vanilla coconut combo. And then the saffron, cypriol, and amber give it like the depth and the performance for the cooler months. Performance wise, about seven hours with a stronger projection. So if you wanna try a sample of this, they have them on Twisted Lily. You can use my discount code on a 10 for 10% off. And then they also have the bottle should you happen to fall in love with it. Next is Burberry Goddess. This is just very comforting to me. It's like an easy reach, just easy choice, go-to scent. It'll suit every occasion. It's crowd pleasing. This is a vanilla, which, you know, universally tends to be a very flattering note. And it provides that cozy, warm, inviting character with the sweetness, but Burberry Goddess is not too sweet. Like this is not full-blown gourmand. It's not sugary. Like the way this just like melts onto skin is beautiful. And then it's accompanied by like a nice light lavender, nothing too aromatic or floral, but will provide that touch and it just elevates the scent. And there's just a touch of a ginger to bring in that fresh spicy quality. It's giving clean, girl next door, just pretty vibes. And I get about four or five hours with moderate projection. Now you really want to serve sophisticated class. Like anyone who wears Louboutin Luby Rouge, this DNA like smells so posh, like so put together, elevated, demure. First of all, I just find iris in general to very much so have that kind of like effect for me, having that grown classy feel like that elegant powdery quality. I'm never not in the mood for this. It just always works. We have a soft vanilla in here that creeps up like the longer this sits on your skin then it will become more prevalent and then a cardamom note which is bringing in a beautiful fresh spiciness and i feel also has a bit of a fresh paper like accord because of the type of spice that is used in here it isn't like a cinnamon or nutmeg and the overall like soft dainty character that it has I wear it year round and i get about five hours with more of an intimate projection i am featuring Ambrosia Imperial again from Navitus. I can't help it, it fits in this category. Also, I find this to be one of like the most addictive, intoxicating fragrances in my collection. Like for me, I find this intoxicating and it gets compliments, which is a bonus. Best banana fragrance I've ever smelled in my life. Like every other banana fragrance I've tried, like I'm left wanting more. Either the note doesn't stick around long enough, it smells too young, too food-like for me, it's not complex enough, I'm wanting something more. This, this is what I wanted. This is warm, caramelized, like airy, boozy bananas. And like, yes, I get the banana note, but it's not the typical smell of banana. Like the way this is balanced with all these other sexy notes really elevates this scent. And although I love this to death, it is unique. So I recommend getting a sample first, in particular because of the Devana note, because that part of it won't be for everyone. It brings this a little bit of like a bitter edge and that's just in the opening, but I feel like it just gives it such a cool character. There's a nice comforting bit of cinnamon. There's the rum, as I mentioned before, like that boozy quality, a touch of vanilla. And I love the use of benzoin in here. It's warm, it brings you closer, but it's never too heavy. The saffron is gorgeous, lends like an airy sweet tone, but this never gets like heavy, thick, 
too gourmand, too sweet. So there's enough umph in there for the fall winter, but then because it's airy and there's banana, it's fun for spring summer. And I get all day wear out of this with a moderate projection. Then we have love of my life, Lise Bow. Um, everyone, I, I feel like everyone needs this, like men and women, as long as of course this is your kind of scent profile, but oh my gosh. Top two in my most favorite woody vanillas of all time. This is inspired by California redwood pine trees. It feels like the most perfect, beautiful, warm day in the sequoia forest. The sun is like shining through the trees, like you see the beams of light coming down and it's like gently warming up the wood. It's natural, but it also has this like very smooth, powdery quality to it. Extremely comforting, like nature's blanket if you will. Beautiful, lightly sweetened incense. This doesn't smell smoky to me. A balmy Elemy resin and a vanilla to tie this all together. Never getting to be too much, too sweet. This is beauteous. It smells so chic and now just feels like absolute home to me. This is bottle number four. It's a scent I identify with at this point, like very strongly. And this has great performance. It lasts all day on me and Eric. And the projection for the first couple hours is strong. We will smell each other from like opposite ends of the house and then it will tone down to a moderate projection. And although this is woody and there's incense, because it smells so natural, like it just feels like you're out in nature, but then obviously with this perfume spin to it, we wear it all year round. Cause I feel like when fragrances, you know, smell natural, they tend to work year round. Last one for today, Rania J Musk Most Juice. Beautiful musk fragrance, oh my goodness. And this is a strong performer as well. As a fresh juice, I get like six hours moderate projection. The longer it sits, like this lasts all day. And this is like the epitome of an elevated, refined, like clean scent. It has this high end shampooy kind of tone, um, but it's not just that. Cause if it was, that would be boring for me. It's powdery cocooning from the iris, a soft creamy sandalwood. The bergamot brings in that like bright, fresh tone, clean, fluffy musk. And then there's these like beautiful additions of like a sweet vanilla, like a jammy black currant. And as this ages, that vanilla and black currant becomes more prominent as well. And will start to go kind of like in the gourmand direction, um, but never fully getting there. I think this is such a beautiful option for girls who want to smell clean, classy, put together. This is so pretty. It's nice for me to reach for on warmer days, but because of the performance, it cuts through the cold. Like when I got this in the mail, I could smell this when it was delivered in the box without even opening it. I could smell it through the box. So that wraps up my list for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!